In your quest to analyze data sets or build machine learning models, you probably encountered a situation where you have imbalanced data sets, which as the term suggests, means that the class label is very imbalanced, whereby one class may have abnormally high number of data samples, whereas another class label will have significantly lower number of the data sample. For example, if you have a data set where you're trying to predict whether a student will pass or not pass an exam on the basis of several input parameters, then an imbalanced data set would mean that you have significantly larger number of students who do not pass the exam. For example, you could have 2,000 data samples for those not passing the exam, and you would have, let's say, 200 data samples for those passing the exam. Particularly, you have 200 versus 2,000. And so you can see that there's 10 times higher magnitude of those not passing the exam. And so how can you deal with that data set? We're going to cover that in this tutorial video. And so we're starting right now. All right, and so let's get started. And the links to this particular Jupyter Notebook will be provided in the video description. And so the first thing that you need to do is make sure to update or install your imbalanced learn library. And so this particular library will allow you to handle the imbalanced data sets. And so let's proceed further. And we're going to read in the data here. And the data is from one of our research groups recent publication on the hepatitis C virus inhibitors. And so I'll provide you the link to the original research paper and also the GitHub of this particular research article. And so let's read it in and let's have a look at the data frame. And so here you can see that there's 578 rows or there are 578 compounds and there are 882 columns where the last column is the activity class label. So let's scroll to the right and you're going to see here the activity class label active and inactive. They're quite imbalanced and so I'm going to show you in just a moment here and the rest here are the x variables. So first thing that we need to do here is to split the data set from the data frame here to the x and y variables and so we're using the df.drop activity column for the x variables meaning that we're going to drop only the last column the activity column and then to assign the y variable we're going to particularly select the activity column and assign it to the y variable and so let's have a look at the y variable and so here we're going to see that there are 412 active and 166 inactive meaning that there are 412 rows having a value of active and there is only 166 rows having a value of inactive and if we have a look at the pie chart we're going to see that they're pretty imbalanced so the active class has significantly almost three times more data samples than the inactive class. So we have 412 versus 166, which accounts for 71.28 versus 28.72%. And so I've provided you two versions of the code and approach number one here, you're gonna use the inbuilt function of pandas in order to make the pie plot, or you could also display it in the traditional way of using the matplotlib here. I'll point to notice that both are using matplotlib, but then the second example here is explicitly using the matplotlib approach, whereas this approach, approach number one, will be using the built-in function of the pandas in order to make the pie plot. So you're gonna get the same pie plot here. And so now let's address the problem. How can we go from this imbalanced data set to this balanced data set, whereby the actives and the inactive will be proportional to one another. And so here we're gonna use the random undersampling, meaning that the majority class will be reduced so that it will have the same proportion as the minority class. So the terminology here is the majority, meaning that there are the high data samples and the minority are the ones with the lower data samples. And so in order to do undersampling, we're going to reduce the size of the majority so that the majority will then be equal to the minority. This is one approach, undersampling. And another approach would be oversampling. And so oversampling would mean that we want to increase the minority class so that it is equal to the majority class. 
And so in our example here, we have 412 active. And so this is the majority class. And we have 166 inactive, which is the minority class. And so in undersampling, we're going to reduce the majority class. So we want to reduce 412 to become 166. And so I'm going to show you that in just a moment. And in oversampling, we're going to increase 166 to become 412. And in order to do that, we're going to perform resampling. Repetitive resampling will allow us to artificially generate new data samples so that 166 original data samples will then become 412 because at each resampling, it's going to be performing in a random manner as shown here. We're going to use the random undersampling and the random oversampling. And so you could check out the API of this library's documentation, which will provide you more than one way to perform undersampling and more than one way to perform oversampling. And so in this particular example, I'm going to show you only the random approach of performing both undersampling and oversampling. And so the links to the imbalance learn library is provided here. You could click on the logo here, which will take you to the website and you could click on the API reference here in order to see the other functions available to you for performing undersampling, which is right here. And here we're going to use only random undersampler. And as you can see, there are several other approach. And then if you click on oversampling, there are several approaches here. And the predominant one is the smoot oversampling approach. And so you could check that out and let's head back to the tutorial. All right. And so here we're going to perform random undersampling. As I've mentioned, we're going to reduce the majority class so that it will have the same number as the minority. And a point of note here is that we're going to import the random undersampler function from the IMB learn dot undersampling. And here we're going to create a variable called RUS. R means random, U mean under, S means sampling. And we are using the random undersampler function. And as input argument, we're going to use the sampling strategy equals to one. And so as you can note here, it could also be a floating number or it could be a numerical number. Let me just say number here or numerical value. And you could also comment this portion out and perform this approach as well, which will provide you the same results. Okay. And so this will provide you with a ratio of one to one when you have a value of one, but you could also play around with the numbers here, which will give you a relatively unequal class ratio, meaning that the active and inactive will not be in a one to one ratio. And so I could show you that in just a moment and let's run it. It's actually the one generated from the previous one. And here is the new one here. And so in the X underscore RES, RES means resampling and Y RES is the resampled Y. And so we're generating two new variables here via the use of the RUS dot fit underscore resample and the input argument are the X and Y, which is the original X and Y. And here we're generating the new X and Y. And then we're going to take the newly generated Y variable and then we're going to have a look at the value count. And so let's take a look at this particular function, which is right here. So the newly generated Y variable dot value count will give you the number of compounds in the active and inactive class. And so here you can see that there are equal number of actives and inactives. And so you can see clearly that the majority class active has been reduced from 412 to become 166 right here. And then the code here is take the value count as shown here, which is 166 and 56, and then applying the plot.py function, as I mentioned earlier, is a built-in function to make the pi plot. And then you have percent dot two F, which will give you two decimal points here. And then here we're gonna set the title to be under sampling. All right, and now let's head over to the random oversampling. And so let's move back to this original data distribution. So in oversampling, we're going to increase the size of the minority class. And so 166 inactive will then become 412. And so for this one, we're going to create the ROS variable, 
and we're using the random oversampler function from the imblearn.oversampling. And then as input argument, we could use either one or not majority. And so both will provide you with the same results. And then here we're gonna, in a similar fashion, generate the new X and Y variables using the ROS.fit resample, taking in the original X and Y. And then we're gonna take the newly generated Y variable and then we're performing the value count. And then we're gonna make the pie plot out of that. And then we're gonna show the two decimal points. And then we're gonna set the title here to be oversampling. All right, and you can see here that now now the data is equally distributed. So the number of compounds are, that are active and inactive are now the same at a one-to-one -one ratio. So there are both 412 compounds now. And so as you can see, the inactive increased from 166 to become 412. And so I think it would be better that I leave this as your homework to play around with this particular option here. You could modify this to be in the range of zero and one. And please feel free to try the other over or under sampling approaches as mentioned in the API document documentation and drop a comment your observation from this experimentation and congratulations you have successfully balanced your data set using undersampling or oversampling let me know in the comments which approach do you like better oversampling or undersampling and I hope that you're finding value in this video. Please support the channel by smashing the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and also make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.